Firstly, I'd like to show you with the mannequin how to perform closed suction. Closed suction units are used in the intubated patients in intensive care and occasionally on the wards with tracheostomy patients. As you can see, the suction catheter is in a in plastic encased uh, wrapper and when we use this, we clean them afterwards using the saline, um, saline vials and that keeps this clean for 24 hours before it's changed by the nursing staff. So it will be plugged into the suction in ICU con constantly, so we don't have to usually worry about that. But if we, before we perform a suction, if we press on this button just to make sure that the suction is on and that it hasn't been left locked for any reason, so that after we pass the catheter that we have to mess about with it. So before we carry out the suction, we would do this in response to patient having secretions that are able to be cleared. And we know this from a, as, a, as a result of our treatment and our assessment to date. So if we know for the patient has had an issue with desaturating and suctioning, we can use the ventilator to give them 100% oxygen prior to this to prevent that happening. So do that before you suction if it is indicated. Otherwise, go for it. So you hold the ET tube and the suction mount at the green wrapper and then you feed it down through taking the plastic back as you go like so when you when the patient coughs or you reach a point of resistance it is time to apply the suction but if you reach resistance pull back a little bit in case you're on the carina and then press and clear the suction clear the debris clear the secretions and bring it up so that the procedure doesn't last any longer than 10 seconds, like so. So to clean out the, the catheter afterwards, use this little port, open, and then open the vial, like so, and pass it, just press it on here, and then apply the suction until the vial empties. So all right. <laughs> so it goes in here, and then we suction and the fluid will clean the suction catheter. Now it is important before you do this to make sure that this black uh, edge is visible so that you are not going to be bringing saline into the patient's airway and that it is purely clean cleansing the suction catheter. Okay. Just when we're here, saline lavage is used in ICU occasionally for patients who have exceptionally thick secretions that are not shifting easily with manual techniques. And how we would use that, we use the catheter and we use this little vial. So we would make sure that the, ca the ET tube is vertical and we pass the suction catheter down about halfway. And at that point, we use the saline valve put it into the port and on the side of it it's marked in five mils and we just pour five mils down initially and see how the patient reacts. Take this out, cover and lift this out and carry on with our physiotherapy treatment. We do not suction it straight out of the patient because that will not be effective. We do our manual techniques whether it's and with or without manual hyperinflation, but most commonly we use manual hyperinflation to ensure that we are dispersing the saline and trying to unstick secretions from the walls of the alveoli. Um, manual hyperinflation is a technique used in, phys in physiotherapy in the intensive care unit with the aim of increasing lung volumes, clearing secretions, assessing lung compliance and we also use it if someone's saturations have decreased and this is a way of improving oxygen saturations. Uh, we use it in intensive care in Craigavon Hospital with the nursing staff but I want to show you how to do the manual hyperinflation yourselves and what the, uh, the techniques are for that. Um, what you need is an ambu bag, um, an oxygen supply which is always at the wall and um, an artificial lung to uh, use 
to attach the patient's ventilator to to make sure the circuit is then closed and we're not generating extra air results from the ventilator. What, when you're carrying out this treatment, it is so important to observe the patient, to observe their heart rate, to observe their blood pressure and their saturations. Um, you're trying to do several things at once and it is a skill in itself. But to carry out the procedure, we would turn on the oxygen at the ball to the full value. So this will in cause the, in the bag to inflate. Okay, so we'll have the bag filling up shortly. And you want the bag to be filled with air before you attach the patient to it. We then take the patient off the ventilator. So the patient will be moving and the, the artificial lung is attached to the edge of the ventilator. And we attach this bag onto the patient. The bag will fill up and what we can do is we empty the bag into the patient, hold it for a second or two to try and ensure an end expiratory hold and then let go quickly. Now when we do that we need to, to we may adjust the pressure valve so that we can get an increase in pressure or a decrease in pressure going by compliance of the patient's lungs. The valve here is how we adjust the pressure that the patient is receiving. So if the bag is at the open mark, so fully open, the patient is going to receive very little pressure and it will be below the optimal level for, incre for increasing expansion in the lungs and ensuring air is getting into the places where there has been obstruction. If the bag is fully closed, we are increasing the pressure to the patient, but it may be detrimental to the patient and cause barrel trauma if the pressures are too high. It can also induce coughing in a paroxysmal manner, which was not helpful to the patient. So I personally put the bag to the halfway between the two and then adjust as I feel the need with the patient and look for signs of chest expansion and listening for mobilisation of secretions to know that I am being effective in my treatment. So if I have it at half. Let the bag fill up. So letting the bag fill. Try and time it with the patients when they are breathing, if they are breathing for themselves. Slow squeeze in, hold at the end, and quick release. Good. And keep talking to the patient, let them know what you're doing, and adjust if you need to achieve the effects that you want from the treatment. So squeeze in again, let go quickly. So uh, continually watching the monitors for signs of decrease in blood pressure, increase in heart rate, or arrhythmias in the cardio in the cardiac ECG. So, and squeezing in again. So from your L drive information you, you will find all of the data on how to manage these um, hazards of manual hyperinflation. Good. So generally would give the patient five, six breaths. We can do this along with manual techniques, percussion, vibes, and if the patient coughs or you hear secretions moving, it is time to give them a suction. And at that point, the bag should be emptied and you pass down your catheter like so. Press the suction, keep holding on and suck and remove. Okay. Prior to your treatment, after you have assessed your patient, you should consider what position you want the patient to be in in order to receive the maximal benefit from your treatment, rather than trying to do this in the middle of the treatment when the patient's detached from the ventilator. Uh, you should also consider what, looking at the ventilator modes prior to treatment and see if the patient is breathing for themselves or if they're in a controlled mode. If they're in a controlled mode, they will be relying on you completely for ventilation 
and it is important to remember this. If the patient is in a supported mode and they're returning to the ventilator, they may, because you have been giving them some additional support, not breathe on initial return to the ventilator. So please observe for this. The, al the alarms in the ventilator will let you know if this has happened and it can be easily rectified, but it is something to observe that it can happen with your treatment and document and let them ensure that the staff know that this has happened. We would also advise that um, you continually monitor your patient, but also to ensure treatment is effective uh, with your reassessment afterwards, ensure that you have achieved what you have set out to achieve with your treatment. And um, the other thing to consider is acclimatizing patients to the, the bag and to this different form of breathing. If they have been breathing for themselves, they may find the additional support and additional pressure from the manual hyperinflation a little uncomfortable. So do use smaller tidal volumes. Don't empty the bag. Use a slow, regular method rather than feeling you have to breathe very quickly. And then s slowly improve, increase the tidal volume or the pressure that you give the patient as they are coming to becoming more acclimatized to it. Breath stacking. Uh, breath stacking is used whenever patients need to uh, employ an additional strategy for ensuring a maximal insufflation so that they can aid removal of secretions. So for example, the type of patients who would need to use something like this is patients who have a peak cough flow equal or below 160 litres per minute and if they have or if they have a total lung capa total vital capacity of less than 2,000 or 50% of their predicted. So the patients that come into these categories tend to suffer from uh, neuromuscular issues or have a paralytic disorder where they've had a spinal cord issue where they are have a restrictive problem where they cannot achieve increased lung volumes. So the breath stacking is, it is a form of maximal insufflation or lung recruitment. And we use this bag which has a one way valve so the pressure, the air can only go in one way. The can't breathe, the patient can't breathe it out. So it is not a resuscitation bag. It has the valve here, so the air is only going to go one way, but it also has a filter as well to help keep the bag clean. So we would encourage the use of either a mouthpiece or if the patient had decreased bulbar control, a face mask instead. Uh, for demonstration purposes, just to show you the effects with the, um, of the breath stacking, I'm going to use an Ambu bag just for as a, as a demonstration purely. Um, so we use the bag to squeeze it and you can see the bag inflating and inflating till it gets to its maximal point and then we let go and we encourage the patient to hold their breath for two to five seconds if they can so that they are getting a maximal insufflation and then let it go like so and the air will slowly come out of the bag. So with the patient, Patients can use this breath stacking three, four times a day, 10, 15 breaths to really encourage expansion that they will not be able to achieve themselves. So it can give a stretch to the intercostals and into stiff rib cages. That is a good thing because it will generate a flow to get a better cough, peak cough flow and aid removal of secretions. So it is important that the patient is on board and fully consenting. This is not a treatment that you can carry out on a patient who is not consenting. You, at the initiation of the treatment, you need a non-verbal communication sign so that the patient can tell you when they have reached their maximum insufflation capacity. So whether that is the eyebrows or the hand up, that there is a clear signal so that you are not pumping air into the patient when they feel they, have, they are at their limit. This will reduce the risk of any trauma or unpleasant sensations for the patient too. So 
it is advised not to do this prior to meals or sorry, just after meals as it can make patients quite sick. So there are a whole, the whole list of contraindications and precautions are available on the L drive so I'll not go through that now but I will show you how to carry out the technique. So firstly have the patient positioned upright if possible. Now it can be carried out in supine if that is all the patient can manage but an upright position would help improve expansion more towards the bases. You can use a mask or a mouthpiece. The mouthpiece is very good to use if the patient has good bulbar control and that they can hold it tightly in their in their the lips and it is so important that they're making a tight seal otherwise the air is just going to leak out and will not achieve the desired effect. So if the patient is not unable to do that we would use the mask. We, if the patient is, uh, is not able to achieve breath stacking which is where you're adding extra breaths in so that they're holding their breath you can do one maximal insufflation so that you're pushing as much air in as possible ask the patient to hold if they can and then let it out it is not as effective as the stacking so after we've positioned our patient we give them we make sure we have eye contact and that we are in clear communication with the patient at all times and that we are given the signal that we're going to start the treatment so we're going to breathe in 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 and in and hold 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 and breathe out gently okay so whenever the patient's ready we would repeat this again I would use this trying to do a set of five at initially and then start and build it up gradually. I would be observing at this point if the patient has any secretions, see if we're moving any secretions and if they're able to cough because we want, the point of this is to increase their peak cough flow by giving them maximal insufflation. So if we bring the, you no know, use this again, bring it in, 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 ready to cough, hold and cough and carry out like so, so until the secretions are cleared. But the point of this is to help clearance of secretions and this is something that should help. It also will help improve their lung capacity and increase their lung volumes through recruitment.